Not one, but two bachelorettes were announced this week on After the Final Rose. So what does this mean? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Shared News. We've got all you need to know that we know on the next season of The Bachelorette. But before we get into it, you guys know the drill. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any future videos. As always, I'm your host, Zachary Reality, joined by Morgan Wright and Allison Van Dam. And Jesse Palmer revealed during the Bachelor finale that both Gabby and Rachel will be the new Bachelorettes coming next season. Morgan, what were your first thoughts on this when you heard this news? Because it's never been done before. I mean, I was very excited. I thought for sure that it was just going to be Gabby. Um, and then Jesse Palmer says, you know, it's not Gabby. And I'm like, well, then it's Rachel. And then later he says, it's not Rachel. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I did have this moment where I was like, I bet you it's both. And then lo and behold, it was both. I feel like Zachary, I know you and I watch Joe Millionaire. I feel like they are mm -hmm. kind of taking what's going on with that and they're making it relatable to The Bachelor. So I love Joe Millionaire. So I'm hoping that I love this double Bachelorette moment. Yeah, I'm all for it. I think Gabby and Rachel are both extremely deserving. They both were so heartbroken. So it's exciting that they're both getting a second chance at love, but it is going to be a little different with two bachelorettes instead of one. Allison, why do you think they chose both of them and not one or the other? I think it really stems from what we saw at that final rose ceremony between the two of them. After Gabby and Clayton came back, Gabby stopped to Rachel, apologized to Rachel. Rachel was like, oh my God, no, it's okay, it's okay. And they had a very heartwarming girlfriend to girlfriend moment that I think stood out to a lot of viewers. And I think the franchise realized that we've been kind of missing that girl supporting girl dynamic. We had it kind of with Taisha and Caitlin, with Katie and Michelle's season, mm -hmm. but going through the same experience at the same time, I think is a really powerful thing. So after seeing the relationship between Rachel and Gabby and their ability to support each other, even while going through it and dating the same guy, I think that might have been where this idea came from. And I'm really excited because I think they really do have very different personalities, but I can see them really just being each other's biggest advocates. So it's going to be a very exciting yet crazy season. Yeah. And it's like, how could you choose between one or the other when they went through the same experience? They went through that dramatic rose ceremony from hell, the group breakup. It's like if they chose Gabby, everyone would have felt so bad for Rachel. If they chose Rachel, everyone would have been like, what about Gabby? It's like nobody wants to go to paradise if you can be the bachelorette. So it's like they really had no choice but to make both of them. And as you mentioned, Allison, their friendship really shined through with viewers. So it's going to be exciting seeing them side by side all season. And this is is the first time we've ever had two bachelorettes for the whole season. If you remember on Caitlyn Bristow's season, it was her and Brit, and then the boys voted to keep Caitlyn. But no, they're going to be dating. It seems like the same guys. So Jesse made it clear that he doesn't know exactly how it's going to go. But what we do know is there will be 30 men between the two of them, and they will both have the opportunity to fall in love, and production is commencing this weekend. Morgan, how do we think they're going to format rose ceremonies, dates? Are there going to be double dates? What are the group dates going to be like? How do we think they're going to go about this for the season? I think it's going to be really interesting. I feel like maybe they'll take some of the things they did on night one for Caitlyn and Britt and kind of maybe restructure a little bit where they might do the same thing where after night one, you, you tell production maybe which one you're leaning towards or more interested in. But I feel like that won't be the end all be all. You know, I feel like they really will give each lead the opportunity to explore the relationships. I feel like it definitely makes for some dramatic down the line if both Gabby and Rachel like the same guy or if maybe a guy can't decide if they like Gabby or Rachel more. Uh -huh. So, you know, the producers love drama and I feel like this is a way to create new storylines that we haven't seen played out over and over and over again on the franchise for the past 20 years. Oh, for sure. There's going to be guys that like Gabby. There's going to be guys that only like Rachel and there's going to be guys that like both of them. And it's possible that they're going to like the same guy as well. This wouldn't be the first time they fell in love with the same guy. So, Allison, how do you think that they would handle it if they both fell in love with the same guy? And let's just pretend that it's like final eight or final ten. Like we're deep into the season. And they're, what if they have feelings for the same guy? How do we think that's going to play out? 
You know, I was thinking about this too, or even if you got to the point of, you know, a top three in fantasy suites, like, and they both want to do an overnight with the same guy. I don't know if they would get to that point because they both seem like really, you know, mature women. And after what they went through with Clayton, I'm not sure that they would want to willingly go through that much emotional turmoil at that point. But it also made me start thinking about the structure of the rose ceremonies as well, because obviously, you know, night one, you don't know these guys very well. So maybe night one, they have 20 kind of roses between the two of them and they decide on it together Mm -hmm. as a group. But at some point, I would think they would each have to, you know, Gabby has four roses, Rachel has four roses. And I would hope that at that point, they would each have specifically their own kind of group of men. But it'll be interesting to see at what point it goes from kind of like a group effort to individual trying to find love. Yeah, that's what I'm most wondering, because I think they'll take turns handing out roses for the beginning. And then when is it going to change where it's like, you need to choose, are you dating Gabby or are you dating Rachel? And I don't know what point that's going to be at, like you mentioned, Allison, but hopefully it's before hometowns because I think that will get really messy if they're, you know, meeting the same guys as family or if they're doing overnights. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time, but we know that they are going to kind of go into the season together as friends. As Gabby mentioned, she's a girl's girl. However, there is a lot of fans wondering and worried that they could get pinned against each other if they fall for the same guy or the producers could pin them against each other and they could lose their special bond and friendship. There's a lot of people worried about this. Morgan, is this something that you're worried about as a fan? Well, I wouldn't put it past production to try to pit them against each other. Like I said, I think especially this past season and, you know, the previous couple of seasons, we've really seen that the Producers will stop at nothing to get some good drama. You know, they'll do what they need to do to get to make good TV. However, I feel like kind of what Allison was saying before, both Gabby and Rachel are so mature. They've been through this experience together once before. So I feel like even if production tried, because they have that experience, they'll be able to see right through it. Um, obviously there is a chance that they both like the same guys, but I think that they'll be able to figure it out. And at the end of the day, I think they both will find love separately. So you're expecting double proposals, Morgan. I'm going to be optimistic and just go all in and say yes. (laughs) Okay. Me too. And you know what? I want to see a mess. I think that the best part about the bachelor ending is that we saw heartbreak and we saw this drama and this mess to get a happy ending for all parties involved. So I'm kind of hoping that they fall for the same guy and that there is some drama and then it gets resolved in the end, kind of like what happened on Clayton's season where everybody wins. So I'm hoping they like the same guy and I'm hoping it gets messy, FYI. Now, there has been a lot of rumors that they might film this new season on a cruise ship. A blind item on Reddit says, Virginia Voyages cancels a month of cruises with only 12 days notice to charter The Bachelorette filming. That passengers are rightfully outraged. And Reality Steve also reported that one of the locations they are set to travel in is Paris. But if they do go on a cruise, then the options are, you know, endless. There's so many places. We know they're going to start at the Bachelor Mansion regardless. But Allison, how do you feel about a cruise ship bachelorette? I'm not opposed to it. I would be kind of surprised that not only are they doing two bachelorettes, but then they add in a boat element. It seems like a lot of new things happening at the same time. But I mean, for anyone who's been on a cruise, these things are huge. Like there are movie theaters and multiple restaurants and different activities and mini golf and water slides. So even if you were just doing it at sea, you could create a lot of different dates on a boat. And then you would add in, you know, if you go to different ports, different locations. So I mean, I don't know. It would take longer to get to different places than it would just being flying between places. But it could definitely be an option. And honestly... As we've seen, Bravo's below deck. Drama can happen on a boat. I mean, you put people in close quarters on the open sea and things can get messy. So if we want drama, we already have two bachelorettes. We'll just put them on the water and see what happens. Yeah, and hopefully nobody gets thrown overboard. I mean, something I loved about Clayton's season this last season is that they finally brought back the travel element. You know, they weren't just stuck in Nima Colon or New Mexico, like they were able to go to Croatia and um, a few other awesome places. Morgan, where are you hoping the girls travel this season? Anywhere around the world? Oh, well, you know, I'm going to Barcelona and London in a couple weeks. So let's hope that I run into The Bachelorette filming in either of those two locations. 
Okay, well, we'll have to kind of see. I'm excited. We're going to be getting the guys, you know, pictures probably in the next couple of days. So we will look out for that. We'll probably have to rate and review them based on their profile pictures next week. So definitely stay tuned. We do have an air date for The Bachelorette on July 11th. Now, this is a later date than expected as The Bachelorette usually ends at usually airs at the end of May or June, but the creator of the show, Robert Mills, shared to Twitter that they wanted to go on a short break. Allison, is this a good idea to wait until mid-summer, or is this a little long for you? Because we were talking, we're like, what are we going to watch now? You know, honestly, it is a longer break than usual, but we've had more seasons than usual in the last year. I was thinking when we were covering this past finale, it's our fifth finale within about a year between Matt James, Katie, Bachelor in Paradise, Michelle, and then Clayton. So I think I speak for a lot of people that it is a welcome break. And honestly, maybe we'll have more viewers in July after people have a little bit of a break. So it might be a smart, you know, strategy move. Yeah, and it's going to be in the middle of summer, so it's going to be really super exciting to see both of them. Everyone's really rooting for them and invested in their journey. Morgan, before we head out, what are you most looking forward to this season? For me, I'm hoping for a Gabby's grandfather cameo. Yes, definitely. I mean, they just have the best families, both of them. I love Tony, Rachel's dad. I love Gabby's grandpa. So definitely, fingers crossed that we'll see more of them. I'm just excited to see something different. You know, this isn't your standard season. It's not a back-to-back season. I'm ready for something new, something fresh. And even if it's a one-off and it never happens again, I'm excited to see where this road will take us and if this will be the most dramatic season ever. I'm sure they will say it is, Morgan. I'm sure it will be. That is everything we have to share with you guys today. So comment down below your predictions for the next season of The Bachelorette. Do you think Gabby and Rachel will find love? What are your theories on how the format and the roses, the way it will work? Let us know in the comments. And before you guys go, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you never miss out on any future updates. As always, I'm your host, Zachary Reality, joined by Morgan Ray and Allison Van Dom. Our social media handles are on the screen right now, so be sure to give us a follow. Come say hello. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.